Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Orange County School Board's meeting for Tuesday, February 12th, 2019. Most of you, I'm sure, in this chamber are aware that this is a, this is a difficult week for public schools throughout the nation, certainly a difficult week for our neighbors to the south in Broward County. <laughs> And it's a difficult week for everyone here who cares about our children and reflects on the tragedy that happened just a, a year and two days ago now. On Thursday, Marjorie, on Thursday, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School will release early. And the superintendent has put all of our schools on notice that we will be observing a moment of silence in memory of the 17 students and faculty that were lost a year ago. Tonight, as we observe a moment of silence, I would ask for you to keep those families of the loved ones that were lost, the students that were forever changed from the experience that they lived through, and the community of Broward County in your hearts and prayers, as well as all of our students who are living through a time that has never existed in the history of our nation, a time when children are going to school fearful of something tragic happening. I want to also assure you that Orange County Public Schools is leading the way in school safety and has been since 2013 when they initiated a school safety evaluation long before one was mandated by the state. Orange County Public Schools is committed to the safety of our children, but it takes every single one of you, all of the members of our community, all of our students to be vigilant and mindful to report situations that you're concerned about. And it also takes all of us to reach out to each other and to lift each other up and to never isolate anybody in our classrooms, in our communities. We are in this together, and so together we're going to rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. And now, if you'll join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, undivided, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we have several recognitions. Our first recognition is very fitting for this occasion. We're going to honor an employee who was just recently honored nationally by the Assistant Secretary of Defense. To explain how this happened, we'd like to invite Lieutenant Commander of the US, Car US Coast Guard, Brent Downs, also known as a Senior Administrator in Student Enrollment Services. for having me. Through my Coast Guard Reserve Unit, I was able to nominate Dr. Carol McGowan for the Patriotic Employer Award through the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense. And just last month, we were contacted and were told she was selected. So I'd like to brag about her a little bit, <laughs> maybe embarrass her, <laughs> and read everyone my nomination narrative. Dr. McGowan has been an exemplary employer for a member of the Reserves. She not only shows and promotes support and pride of my reserve duty, but also demonstrates her loyalty when it matters most. In my 12 years with the department, I've answered the call to active duty three times during national emergencies. In each instance, her reaction to the news has always been, what do you need? Her concern for my family, our reserve obligation, and myself cannot be understated. Experiencing this level of support provides my family a blanket of comfort and enables me to focus on the mission, knowing that all the common logistical issues of activation are covered. She has always relieved the pressure of my workload by asking others to pitch in, preventing my return to a backlog of projects already behind schedule. Her consistent support and patriotism over the years should be commended and serve as a model to all employers with members who serve in the reserve forces. 
So it is with humility and great thanks that I present to you your Patriotic Employer Award. Thank you and speech. Speech. <laughs> Go Brent. No, it's been an honor to work with Brent these years as he's helped, served our country and us through his service as he's gone to Hurricane Sandy, uh, the Deepwater one, Deepwater Horizon right before school started. That was a good one. Um, Hurricane Irma and Maria. And Hurricane Irma and Maria. But, the, you know, it's what we do to protect our country and to help others in the time of need. Brent, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody. Thank you. And if, if I could ask both um, Ms. McGowan, who we love dearly, and Lieutenant Commander, if you would come forward so the board can just congratulate you, both of you. And thank you. I did not know about me. Yes, that's very cool. Get that right after we do the crossing guards. <laughs> All right, our next guest really should need no introduction. If you saw the Grammy Awards on Sunday night, you know exactly who this person is. <laughs> Nonetheless, I feel compelled to introduce Dr. Redding anyway. So, Dr. Redding was featured on nearly every local news outlet in Central Florida, numerous stations across the country, and nationally on CBS News. He was born and raised in Orlando, graduated from Jones High School. Hey, hey, yes, hey, go Jones. Hey, hey. Attended Florida A&M University Ooh. for his bachelor's degree. And he holds a master's degree and a PhD from my alma, alma mater, yeah. Florida State. Go yeah. Knowles. He was a quarter finalist for the Grammy Music Educator Award in 2016, 2017, and 2018. As the director of choral activities at West Orange High School, Dr. Redding has led performances on stage at the state, regional, national, and international levels. We are enormously proud of you and the incredible work that you're doing, and we really appreciate you putting OCPS on the stage in such a positive light, sir. So with that, without further ado, um, congratulations. Um, outstanding work. You have a few comments for us? We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. This is uncomfortable. Um, if, uh, thank you, board. Thank you um, for having me here um, this evening. I just want to say a couple things. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be a product of Orange County Public Schools. First going to Orange Center Elementary School. Um, and remember that wonderful, what Kat Gordon was there. And, oh, and so, yeah. Geez. And Felton Johnson, who's passed on, and those wonderful, with my principal, I remember those times. And Robert E. Lee Junior High School at the time now is um, College Park. Um, so Beth Meadows and, and, and all those wonderful folks there, and then Jones High School, um, Clara Walters and Hagrid and so on and so forth. And then on to West Orange High School where my first boss, Gary Pricer and Mike Armbruster brought me on, and then Mr. Larson and Mr. Floyd and Ann and so on and so forth, the wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful principals. I will say this to you, um, people have asked me how do I feel about the Grammy Award? And I, I, I'm honored and I am, I'm moved and I'm humbled, um, but it gives a greater platform yeah. to speak about inclusion, to speak about unity, to speak about cre how as a teachers do we create a motivating, inspiring and safe environment to touch, to inspire, to change lives, to teach to the whole. 
So I am, I, I'm, I stand before you humbly saying thank you. But if the attention is going to come on the Grammy, I want it to come on what it represents for teachers, for every teacher, for every administrator, because regardless, you can have a great teacher, but if the administration don't support it, it doesn't matter what the teacher can do. It has to be a relationship. Absolutely. And, 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 and I'm, I'm fortunate at West Orange where I've had every principal allow me to be the best version of myself. So I thank you, I humbly thank you, but um, it's about unity, passion, and purpose, and loving. So thank you very much. Absolutely, well said. Okay. First, first up. That's right, Sam. Give him some audits. Okay. All right, your fan club has a few comments to say here. So we will begin. First up is Member Gould. Um, you know, I, I have the random honor, actually, of being the school board member where West Orange High School is. And, and it has always been a source of pride in our community. Um, and one of the reasons why is because of the talent. Not, not one of the reason why is the talent within our building. Even when it was a very ugly building with lots of brown paneling inside of it, uh, it was a stellar environment for our kids. And one of the things that I have learned from you and watching you um, from a distance and up close more recently is um, you really give every child the opportunity for discovery, enlightenment, to learn grit. Your expectations for them are high. And what you said here earlier about being the best version, that's the expectation you have for them. And joy, not only their joy, but you share that with the community and the world. And we cannot thank you enough for showcasing the kind of teachers we have here and being head and shoulders above just, I don't care what profession you're up against, you are head and shoulders above most human beings. So thank you very much. <laughs> Member Colbert. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, Member Gould, I also get to claim him because <laughs> his picture is on the front of my church <laughs> as I drove past the First United Methodist Church this morning. And uh, he brings us beautiful, beautiful music. And they are also are so proud of you and claiming you. And I just have to tell you when uh, CBS This Morning aired the story on the news um, the other morning, I stopped in my tracks. I knew you were a finalist. but the amount of pride in watching you with your students and in watching the students talk about you. One of his students said that Dr. Redding has given her her identity and in your expectations of excellence and helping them to be the best versions of themselves, you have given them their identity and I, I don't know how much more one human being can do for another. And so you make us all proud, you make your students proud, you make your profession proud, and we are indeed are honored to have you here. Thank you for what you bring to the students. And thank you, Member Cobert. Next we have Mem uh, Vice Chair Gordon, who actually has some uh, claiming blood. rights here as well, I know. Blood, blood. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we, we laugh. I love, I love that when the board members, when we know each other, it doesn't matter what district, uh, that, you know, we were laughing with uh, Deborah McGill tonight saying straight out of Compton. 
And I said, uh uh, baby, just straight out of Hoyne Center. <laughs> but uh, we were all laughing. We love that when we, uh, Linda and I, we share districts. And uh, Pam and I, we share schools. And Daryl Flynn and I, you know, we just share everything almost together. And, it, and it's just exciting because when we look at the people that are honored, and from Brent to bring up, Dr. Carol McGow, I feel like the guy on Dancing with the Stars. I really want to do what he does because two dynamic people that have sailed in your profession, Dr. Carol McGow and Dr. Jeff Reddy, you've gone that extra mile. You've gone, you've just done so much to influence not only just the students, but you both have influenced my life, and not only my life, but everybody around us. You're connected with the community. You're connected with the schools. When we need you, you are there. Both of you are dynamic in your own right. You both have a calm demeanor. You know how to get things done. It is so good that Brent um, just nominated you because of his military background and your reserve background. It's just outstanding. But you and Jeff Redding pretty much go hand in hand because you had to get those kids to tell them how many people he could put in that chorus room. <laughs> and right now, Ms. Gould will tell you it's overflowing. <laughs> it's overflowing, I'm telling you. But it was an honor to be with Mr. Floyd today, to be with Mr. Ambrusdu, who have walked you all the way through. But but people really don't know where you come from and where you have been. Your mother, and they know it, we lived in Orange Manor Apartments, and she raised her boys to be the best that they could be. All of our children grew up together. They went off to middle school together. They went off to high school together. They went off to college together in that community. But Dr. Redding always allowed me to come out to West Orange and speak to his class and ask them. I was his librarian, yes. I was his neighbor. I was his birth mother, helping you look, get him in here. And I was also his, his uh, career teacher. You really don't know, he was very, very hyperactive. <laughs> <laughs> The car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, very hyperactive. And back in the days, if you were hyperactive, we had a class called Educable Mentally Handicapped. And that's what he was recommended to go. Because he was just so brilliant and bright and talented. But we decided as a counselor, that's why people could make a difference in your life. He has stopped a lot of other children, but everybody saw something in him. Mr. Belton Johnson, principal of Boyne Center, even Chief Wilson would come over. He heard his voice. He told Edna Hargard. Edna Hargard came over. They all began to mentor him like what Dr. Jenkins and all of this board, what we're trying to do with children now, and even with Mr. Rosen, getting him at two years old. So that when they get to where Dr. Redding is today, they are well, well made for what they're doing. So Dr. Redding, I want you to know, we always look at that teacher that recommended you, and we send them that PhD degree that you have. <laughs> but I just think that it's awesome to do what you have done and allow me to follow you around throughout the United States because I followed him. His mother could not go all of the time because she worked at Jones High. She was feeding my children. She was in the cafeteria with the, uh, the manager there, but she would make sure that all of our children got a good meal at Jones High. And then when Jaleesa was born, his daughter, she said, you go, cat, and sit in my seat at your church, Linda Culver. Mm -hmm. And I sat there, Jeff, would, if I didn't show up, he would get angry. Deborah McGill, daughter, began to sing with Redding, and they thought he was hyperactive too. <laughs> and Reggie came and he said, I don't know if I wanna let Danielle be, he's kinda all over the place, he's hyperactive. But you know what, after he got there and they saw what he could do, just the love you saw those children giving you today, they all followed you. 
Michael Ambrusta has followed you, tried to get you to move and go with him wherever. He probably would have you sing in a choir with the technical colleges now. <laughs> and I still look to see we having a technical college choir. But there are so many dreams that we are going to complete. There are so many dreams that we made. We, we told the students who were going to be music teachers, and every one of them are music teachers today. So you are a blessing to the community. We love you, and you are, you are well-deserving of this honor. God bless you. You have one of the best moms, the best brothers, the best family in the world, because when you all got your honors, you gave it to your mom. You gave it to your mom, and I thank your mom for allowing me to sit in her seat on many occasions. I love you, son. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Okay. Okay, so, um, Emma Gordon keeps telling us she's, this is her last term. <laughs> she keeps telling us that. I, I, I'm not inclined to believe it, but, but I will have a condition. Um, if you do decide that for some reason you're not running again, you are going to have to come back for events like this because the information that you share with us, the history that you have, the relationships is unbelievable unbelievable and and it's inspiring because it shows us what's possible that when you just see the snapshot shot in time of where we are you don't understand this incredible motion picture that is taking place and changing the lives of, of our children it's incredible having said that i also have the unenviable task of um having to keep time and each board member only gets five minutes and I'm in charge of that. And I knew that this was not going to work with Miss no, Gordon. No, 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 I knew no, there was no can. way she I was going to stick with that five minutes. <laughs> but it was either a case of divine intervention or somebody in the back or somebody managed to bring down the entire system while you were talking. You missed <laughs> it. The whole thing went down. <laughs> and and you I saw still me have two minutes left. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Because, <laughs> well, that's because, like, towards the end of whatever, uh, everything you had to say, I figured out how to get it back up. Just want technical folks, whoever's out there, I just want you to know I did this for once on my own I got it back up <laughs> and the moral of the story and the reason I'm sharing this with the world is because I lost all the speakers who wanted to speak off of recollection I think Miss Gala was next yes. I don't know who's after that but she, I do see Dr. Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins has um, uh, pushed her button if mm -hmm. I missed anybody in between it is a malfunction no, or no. divine intervention to allow Miss Gordon to talk <laughs> as long as she needed to yes. to give us that incredible history. Yes. All right, with that, Miss Gallo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, I didn't really want to follow um, Member Gordon because that was fabulous. And um, unlike Linda and Pam, I, Member Pam, I can't um, claim fame to you, but I keep being told that we're all a team, so I'm taking some credit. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. But I just wanted to say thank you so much. Your words tonight inspired me. They brought me to tears. I'm so happy you chose OP OCPS, and I'm so happy to have you part of our team, and congratulations. Great job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Dr. Jenkins. Thank you, Madam Chair. I certainly wouldn't miss my opportunity to thank both employees, Dr. McGowan, for your hard work being recognized by our military um, for supporting those who serve our country. Certainly thanks go to Brent and all of our armed forces, but thank you for making uh, him feel supported when he has to serve in his position. For Dr. Redding, it goes without saying uh, how incredibly proud we are. I want to thank you personally for not just teaching our young people how to sing, but for investing in their lives. You're really making different young people that will in turn help change our world. So thank you for all of that investment. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention there is the current principal, Bill Floyd, sitting next to him and two former principals that were also there with us this morning for the recognition, the red carpet and the big celebration. Uh, that would be uh, Dr. Larson, I saw sitting over here, and Mike Armbruster, who just came in the back. All of them clearly recognizing the incredible talent and the promise that this young man was going to have for our students. And so now, since the Grammys have come and gone, uh, the rest of the world knows what we've known all along that we have one of the most fabulous, most brilliant teachers for our young people at West Orange High School by the name of Dr. Jeff Redding. Thank you for all you do for our children. Congratulations again. Member Lopez. Dr. Redding. 
congratulations. I was happy as well. No? Yes. That one more time. Dr. Redding, congratulations. Thank you for your message about unity. When we value each other, principals, teachers, students, we achieve our goals. And when we achieve our goals, we have unexpected awards. So I really appreciate that. That's the key to be successful, the unity. Thank you so much for what you're doing with the students. I also want to congratulate Dr. McGowan. Thank you so much, this woman over here, this strong woman. She's so amazing. She has one of the <laughs> hardest work here at OCPS mm -hmm. with rezoning. You don't know how hard is that. And when I have the training with um, Dr. Magawin, I, I love to ask, to ask questions. So she is very patient. I know you ask whatever you want to ask. Do you have any questions? Uh, one hour, one hour and a half, <laughs> she keep going with me explaining. Thank you so much. I knew it. You are very strong, and congratulations. You deserve the award as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Member Lopez. I, I, I will have to say, um, I, years ago, I was in a lot of those zoning meetings, and um, I thought that, that I thought just a, a degree in defense would have been necessary to conduct those meetings back then. But um, OCPS has come a long way and, and done a lot of improvement in terms of that zoning process. And Dr. Redding, thank you. I, I think um, I think Dr. Jen Jenkins said it best. It's not just what you teach in terms of of singing. It's what you teach and inspire in our youth. Your comments about unity. I, I long ago recognized <coughs> that we can't clone people, but in a kind of way, people like you, people like Dr. McGowan, people like so many people that work here in OCPS, with their inspiring attitudes. They rub off, and yeah. so we thank you and keep rubbing off. And if you have any suggestions for us, what we can do better by our, our faculty, let us know, or by our children. God bless you and keep it up. All right, with that and without any further comments from board members, we are going to move on. Dr. Jenkins, uh, do we have any newly appointed administrators to recognize tonight? We have three. I can introduce them to you swiftly. That is. First of all, Sharice Nina, who is resource teacher at Sunblaze Elementary, will be the new assistant principal at Odyssey Middle School. Good evening. Thank you, school board members, Superintendent Jenkins, and staff for this opportunity to serve at Odyssey Middle School. I'm very grateful. I'd like to acknowledge my professional mentors, Dr. Vasquez, Ms. Abby, Ms. Turner, Ms. Olson, Ms. Szymanski, Thank you so much for all you do for me. I'd also like to thank my family who's here with me this evening. My husband, John, my daughter, Amaris, my grandmother, Ramona, my mom, Rebecca, my sister, Katiana, my aunt and uncle, Rachel and Richard and Gloria, and my assemblies family, thank you for your support. Finally, I'd like to thank um, my Odyssey Middle School team and, princi and Principal Hembrook uh, for being here and welcoming me to Odyssey Middle School. I'm very grateful, thank you. Lots of volunteers to sign up there. We always say to our new administrators, any family member that's here tonight is committed to volunteering and helping out at the school as well. So, so Odyssey has a lot of family members that will be joining the ranks. Thank you for being here tonight. Next we have Dominique Ryan, resource teacher at Positive Pathways, will be the new assistant principal at Apopka High School. Good evening. Thank you, school board members, Superintendent Jenkins, and staff for this opportunity to serve at Apopka High School. I'm very grateful. I'd like to recognize my professional mentor, Principal Joe Pons, and I'd also like to thank my assistant principal, Paul Bryant, for being a huge supporter and coming out tonight. Um, I'd also like to thank and introduce my family members, um, my husband, Kevin, my mother-in-law, Joanne, my father-in-law, Mike, and finally, I'd like to thank, a big thank you to the Apopka High School team members and Principal Hines who came out to welcome me this evening and support me. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have Jessica Smith, instructional coach at Palmetto, will be the new assistant principal at Freedom High School. 
Uh, thank you, school board members, uh, Superintendent Jenkins and staff for this opportunity to serve at Freedom High School. Um, I'd like to recognize my professional mentors. I have Ms. Meredith Leftakis, um, Dr. Diane Gollett, Dr. Mandy Ellis um, for really always pushing me to be my best self. Um, I'd also like to thank and introduce my family that's with me this evening. I have my husband, Shane. Um, our two boys are at home with my parents, uh, just for a little bit more quiet. Um, <laughs> and then um, finally, Frank, thank you to Freedom High School, its members, and um, Principal Neely for coming out to support me this evening. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations to each of you, and we are counting. We're looking for nothing short of great, great accomplishments out of you, all of you. Thank you. Now, anyone, um, before we move on, uh, Dr. Jenkins, do we have any changes to the agenda? No, I'm sorry. Let me take public. Let me see if we have any members of the public. Any members of the public that are here for comments regarding anything on the agenda? If you can just show of hands. Do we have anyone here? Okay, we do. If you will make sure that you've picked up a speaker's card and um, at the appropriate time, whether that's for the consent agenda or um, at another item coming up on the agenda, we'll call on you at that point in time. Thank you. Dr. Jenkins, are there any changes to the agenda? No changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Then um, do we have any members of the public before we take up the consent agenda that would like to address the board? And we should have at least one. Okay. I have the card. Thank you. I have the card. Douglas Tripp, Senior Director of Safety and Emergency Management. There you are, Mr. Tripp. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairperson, board members, and of course, Superintendent Jenkins. Tonight on the agenda, there is a proclamation to recognize Crossing Guard Appreciation Day. This is an annual event that allows us to show our gratitude and support for the crossing guards that serve our students. Crossing guards are essential to student safety. Throughout the school year, they work tire tirelessly to provide safe passage for students traveling to and from school. Here at Orange County Public Schools, we have a well-established partnership with our local public safety agencies, and the Crossing Guard program is no different. I'd like to introduce you to our new Interim Director of Fire Health and Safety, Mr. Rich Kirkham, who facilitates our relationship with all agency Crossing Guard coordinators. He has additional information to share with you about the Crossing Guard program. Rich? Good evening. Good evening. Currently, there are 515 crossing guards that play a critical role to ensure that our students can safely travel back and forth from school and home. Of course, having 515 guards is insufficient in numbers because there are 673 crossing guard posts throughout the county. So obviously, there are dozens of, of openings for crossing guards. Each local uh, agency hires and trains their crossing guards and within their own jurisdiction. This evening, we want to recognize the representatives from our, from our partner agencies. Some were able to join us. If you could please stand. And we'd like to recognize you and thank you for having <laughs> you for the We also want to thank uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office, the City of Maitland, the City of Orlando, City of Ocoee, the town of Windermere, and the city of Eatonville for attending tonight as well. We appreciate all you do for us. We partner with 10 separate agencies, 10 separate government agencies that um, handle all of our crossing guards throughout the whole county. And with, large, with uh, Orange County being the largest and the city of Orlando coming in second place. But they're all important to all of us. So, and we also want to add that if you know somebody who wants to be a crossing guard, contact your local jurisdiction and help us out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a proclamation I want to read on behalf of the 
of the board, whereas each and every school day, hundreds of dedicated school crossing guards working throughout Orange County dutifully assist our children across busy streets and highways as they arrive and depart from school. And whereas Orange County Public Schools places top priority on student safety and recognizes that school crossing guards play a critical role in supporting our students' education by ensuring their, safe, their safety when crossing busy roadways. And whereas school crossing guards often encounter challenging and sometimes hazardous conditions during the performance of their duties. And whereas school crossing guards provide an invaluable service to our community and deserve special recognition for their tireless efforts. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Orange County School Board encourages everyone to consider the safety and health of our children today and every day and does hereby proclaim today, February 14th, sorry, Thursday, February 14th, 2000. 2019 here in Orange County as School Crossing Guard Appreciation Day and calls on all citizens to make an ex extra effort to be courteous and appreciative to our school crossing guards. Now, can I ask that the school crossing guard representatives that are here with us today and everyone who's supporting them, if you can guys, if you could all come forward because we would love to have an opportunity to personally thank you. uniform and my sign. Good, how are you? Thank you. Good today. Special work to do. Thank you. All right, without me having to announce it, I think everybody recognized this was their opportunity. You're welcome to spend the rest of the evening with us, but if you don't want to and you want to get back to your families, you're, um, you're excused if you're not essential to the rest of the meeting. God bless and thank you all for being here. All right, with no further comments regarding anything on the consent agenda, are there any questions from board members? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Motion by Member Gould, is there a second? Second by Member Colbert, is uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries unanimously. All right, coming up, uh, we have no items on non-consent uh, information items. Dr. Jenkins, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of things I'd like to share with the board and with the public. Number one, probably most importantly, the governor's budget has been released. You've probably seen some of the um, coverage regarding that budget. I wanted to give you just a couple of uh, summary items, having reviewed them with our CFO, Mr. Kelly. There seems to be a continued trend of reducing required local effort, uh, not allowing for the increase in property values to fund education needs. There's a shift of the best and brightest, $423 million, into the FEFP, which seems to inflate the FEFP, but those are categorical dollars still to be determined how they will be distributed. We have an increased safe schools allocation by $50 million, decrease in digital learning allocation by $50 million, increased mental health allocation by $10 million, eliminating the funding compression allocation of $56.8 million. Our BSA, base student allocation increase, is of about $50 per student, or 1.19%. Overall state increase of 224, um, the overall state increase of 224 million is 40, 
is 3.02, including the best and brightest. I'm sorry. So if you include the best and brightest, it would seem that we have $40 per student or 3.02%. Best and brightest is categorical. And so that cuts down to 1.02% increase currently. That is the governor's budget. We are certainly hopeful that the legislature will make some uh, movements that are more uh, accommodating to our teachers and to public education in general. Again, I would say the required local effort alone is disappointing if we continue to hold that, um, knowing that those funds would help fund education needs. As we continue to hear the discussions, if you'll watch your legislative updates, we will keep you apprised of where the legislature lands on their budget uh, deliberations. But these are the outcomes of the governor's recommendation. Secondly, I wanted to mention, um, when, I'm, when I'm out of town sometimes, I do want you to know I've been doing something, I broke this while I was sitting here, something from it, it's okay because I spilled coffee on it in the car, so. Oh, wow. But there is a photo, um, Broad Center actually recognized our work here for achievement uh, and delivering high quality learning uh, opportunities for our students. And I say that, I, don't want, I didn't want to just show a picture, although I do want you to know I'm doing what I said I was doing when I'm out of the district. But here's the neat part about what Eli Broad and his foundation will do. When that award is granted, they offer, uh, this is the second time they've done it for Orange County Public Schools, uh, to pay for a luncheon for my entire leadership team. And so my leadership team includes this incredible board. I want to invite you to a luncheon on February 18th, which is President's Day, if you're not otherwise tied up, that will be the luncheon date sponsored by the Broad Foundation at 310, um, which is over Bridget Pine Street. It's over on Pine Street, 310. All the information will be put on your calendars. But thanks to Eli Broad uh, and his foundation and their generosity, our recognition includes a luncheon for the entire leadership team, including you. So wanted to invite you to that. Lastly, last year, the video services team helped Superintendent Student Advisory Council develop five video messages about topics in our code of student conduct. Video topics include a did you know video about safe harbor, <coughs> sexual harassment, threats via social media, bullying, distributing, selling drugs on campus, and bringing weapons on campus. What we've learned is that when our young people are behind those productions, they speak to their peers in a much more clear voice than sometimes the adults do. So we want to show you a few of the videos that were produced for the students and the parents uh, that our video services helped my Student Advisory Council create. Roll it. Oh my God, you brought mace? Oh my goodness, I must have forgotten. I left it there. Let's go, let's go. What's going on?
Mom, this is pretty serious. Can you check this out? Oh, my goodness. We need to call 911 now. 911, what's your emergency? very proud of our young people who worked on those. That's three of the five that they produced, but also very appreciative of the team who worked on the project. Wendy Roundtree, Jared Brooks, Parker Antoine are in the audience. Victor West, Chris Moynihan, and Daniel Avia, who are in the master control room, and countless other employees, staff, and students who served as cast members for the videos. Thanks, guys. They have an award. They're holding up. Not quite not quite as beautiful as the Grammy, but they do <laughs> they do have an award. Uh, the, the videos were recently honored in the 2018 Markham Platinum Award in the Digital Media Social Campaign category. Markham is administered by the Association of Marketing and Communication Professionals. Since its inception in 2004, it has evolved into one of the largest, most respected creative competitions in the world. So congratulations to the team and to our young people on the Advisory Council as well. Awesome. That's all, Madam Chair. Does that conclude your report, Dr. Jenkins? Okay. Um, I, I noticed I overlooked um, Ms. Dunkelmeyer. Did you want to you, you want to speak now? And then we'll hear from our county, or our, I'm sorry, school board attorney. He was a county attorney before he got stolen, but. You're still in the Still in the county. Jane, great to see you. It's good to see you too, Chair Jacobs. And board members of the community. Um, my name is Jane Dunkelberger. I was about to give you my address. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm a community advocate and school advocate for West Orange County. Um, I have a 10th grader and 8th grader. Uh, I'm here um, in regards to uh, MOVE, uh, Mothers Opposing Violence in Education, our working acronym for those of you that don't know. Um, we are on social media. Our handle is Push Move Florida. Um, our working acronym is uh, measures of safety, uh, outreach, thanks to the faith-based initiatives of OCPS, uh, vote for change, and educating. Educating to um, report and not repost, like we just watched here tonight. I'm here to show support on the Sandy Hook promise. Uh, MOVE was very excited to see this on the agenda, and um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Sandy Hook promise, it's uh, no-cost programs that hopefully uh, we'll be hearing a little bit about in discussion tonight um, with uh, prevention programs to help with um, students that may show signs of suicidal tendencies and also um, minimize social isolation um, for um, like giving training, suicidal uh, assessment, how, how to cope and handle and deal, and also to help teachers recognize the signs. I think this is really important today. Um, you know, with everything that we're seeing in, in, in society with children, we want to make sure that they feel like they're they're safe to go to school. Um, I think we live in, uh, and I've said this before, we live in a society where they're either afraid to walk to school or just go to school, be at school. We don't want to do that anymore. I think we're seeing a lot of beautiful change, especially tonight. Um, all the all the things that are happening I feel that we are safer a year from where we were yet last last year um, but you know it's a progress that it, it needs work and there's many facets gun violence it, we may be in, de in a debate of that for the next decade but you know keep hardening our schools and keeping them safe 
keeping our children safe, the next generations to come. It may be this generation that we just saw the students that on the video tonight, but you know, it's coming and, and we have support. Uh, MOVE fully supports the Sandy Hook Promise. Um, parents can look it up at sandyhookpromise.org. And um, again, if it's a no cost program, I really hope that um, this comes to fruition. I know that um, MOVE has a lot of parents and uh, even our community uh, PTO or um, community parents, leaders that would like to participate and help with that and help this program grow. Um, there's two programs uh, particularly that you can look up, Start With Hello and uh, SOS, Signs of Suicide. It trains youths and adults how to identify, intervene, and get help for people who may be depressed or suicidal. So again, I just want to thank you for your time, and um, uh, God bless every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you, Jane. Um, um, Member Bird. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Chair. So I was actually going to speak on that topic, so <laughs> it was quite appropriate that I followed you. Um, I just, you know, when I saw it on the agenda, I was very excited as well. I feel... Um, that, you know, in this day and age with what our children are facing, and I think our board has made it very clear that, you know, the mental health of our children is of the utmost importance to us. So to have us go into this partnership with the Sandy Hook Promise um, Foundation, I'm just thrilled about. I think it's fantastic. It's such a positive step in the right direction, and I think... Um, I think it's such a great way for us to be proactive, just like we need to be. And I think that um, our kids are really going to benefit from it. I'm just, I'm thrilled about it. So I just wanted to take a minute to thank the staff that, um, you know, did this and put this partnership together because um, I'm thrilled about it and I think it's terrific. Thank you, Member Bird. Member Gallo. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to echo Member Bird's um, sentiments about Sandy Hook. I actually had the pleasure of meeting them a couple years ago, and they explained the whole program to me, and I couldn't have been more impressed. And I thought at the time, boy, this would be a great, great thing for Orange County Public Schools to do and for us to implement. So I'm, I'm thrilled as well that we've implemented this, and I look forward, to, look forward to hearing more about it and see how, how it does in the district. I'm, I'm excited. On a side note, I also wanted to say that I was in Tallahassee last week. Most of you know I, I go up there some. Um, and I met a student from Timber Creek High School who served on Dr. Jenkins' student advisory committee. He was in another leadership role um, uh, with, with the college organization. But he was telling me he actually did the rivalry love when, when that was a thing. And so it was a pleasure meeting him. And I would love to have somebody from the student advisory council come to a board meeting and, and talk to us and, and be a part of it. I think that would be fabulous. But thank you for this video. Thank you, Member Gallo. Member Gould. Um, I am thrilled that the Sandy Hook Promise Agreement um, has been able to uh, be um, confirmed tonight on our consent agenda. Uh, I was able to see this program at the Florida School Board Association meeting, I think, last summer, and and several of us saw that that had been on the board and, and brought it back, and it's thrilling to see. I also want to remind parents that we have an app called Orange County Public Schools, or OCPS app, and in addition to the programs that... Um, uh, Mrs. Dunkelberger so aptly outlined the hello and the signs of suicide. There is also on that app a um, speak out uh, hotline. So, and as long as, it, along with many other great tools like the school calendar, progress book, links to volunteering, all of those things. So it's an all-in-one kind of linked app that if you want to have access to the information that is OCPS, that's a quick and easy way to do it. So again, just open your applications and download that on your phone, and it's at your fingertips, including that Speak Out hotline, which is very, very important. Um, as we saw from the videos, it really is about being able to speak out and get information in on whatever you're concerned about. So uh, I just wanted to highlight that. Thanks. Thank you. All right, without um, any other comments from board members, we're going to move on to Woody Rodriguez to our um, legal report. Madam Chair, members of the board, no report at this time. 
All right, then let me ask if there are any other um, policy issues. Uh, we have put out an, uh, an agenda of uh, work sessions. Um, one, of, uh, one of the items uh, I'm, I had asked you about, um, Dr. Jenkins, was um, the, the concerns or the questions that we received about testing and what's mandatory and um, what is locally um, driven. And I know that's on there. I can't remember what it was under. It was under. Thank you. I remember it was something that, as a newcomer to the board, that terminology, so it was in progress monitoring. Um, any other board uh, policy issues? I'm, um, go ahead, member. Cool. Um, I, I, the, the superintendent brought up the budget tonight, and I just wanted to remind people a little bit about, as we go into the budget discussions or watch the legislature and the governor um, look at the budget, in the last two years, we have had an increase in cost of living in the Metro Orlando area. In 2017, it was 2.5 percent, and in 2018, it was 2.1 percent. So nearly a 5 percent increase in just basic costs, the cost of our milk, the cost of our utilities, the cost of our uh, mortgage payments, the cost of, of driving the cost of the cost of the cost of so and we are once again talking about a 1.9 percent increase in a budget and more than half of that would be in restricted buckets so how can we possibly with that baseline of unrestricted funds which would work out to what 0.75 percent at best if we were to adopt the governor's budget tomorrow even think about getting market rate salaries for our team members so as we go into this process i wanted to put that out there and kind of highlight why it's important that we fund all those things that are vitally important to us our safety Digital curriculum concerns me. There's been appeal back on that. But, but our core services, but we have got to have reoccurring, unrestricted dollars that we can invest in our colleagues. So um, if you are active out there in the community, please bring that to your legislative representatives. Thank you. Member Castor Dental. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, take a moment to um, share that I um, I visited, I've been visiting some schools, and one in particular that I wanted to um, just kind of report back, and it has to do with a, a school that we all um, share. It isn't just in my district, and that's Positive Pathways. And um, I've seen it come up many times on the consent agenda because it's an alternative placement for middle and high school students who often have uh, behavior concerns or they have been expelled and this is a place where we send students or allow them to continue to learn and I know there was some hesitation with some parents recently so I wanted to go see what what was there and I have to tell you member Gordon I believe you brought the program positive pathways Dr. Jenkins I could not have been more impressed. I met with the principal, um, Joe Pons, and he gave me a tour, and I would not have been able to, to tell that there were students there with behavioral um, concerns. There were caring teachers. There was structure in place. It was not overly rigid. Um, the teachers were obviously caring. The class sizes were small. There was an order. The students looked nicely dressed and with a tie and button-down um, shirts. And they were well-behaved, but more importantly, they were all engaged in learning. And the teachers, uh, it was such a, a, a nice feel, such a great atmosphere. Um, I would have no hesitation teaching there myself. It, it is a great alternative, and I don't think we should hesitate to um, allow students to go there if 
if the, we need an alternative placement for them. But I'm so glad that we have this, and it, it is so well run. Thank you. Thank you. Let me call on Member Gordon. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do want to thank um, Member Castadental, and I still want to say Dr. M Member Castadental. She doesn't talk about it, but she too has that in philosophy, which is un outstanding. I, I do want to commend Dr. Jenkins and her staff for doing such an outstanding job with that. I'm so happy to hear that you did go and actually see I brought it, I didn't know you were going to bring it up, but I'm so glad you did because I don't know how many of us had the opportunity to either be in the audience last night when Chair Teresa Jacobs was with the uh, CBS TV6 on last evening, and I happened to have been online um, feeling the questions, and it kind of disturbed me because the person that was taking the question was very courteous but there were over 50 questions that never got answered by the panel because people were talking about themselves, not you all. The people that got up, you know, began to talk about themselves and, and where they work and what they do and all that. But it did not get to them. And I was going to ask, and, um, and Chair Jacobs, you did a very good job, but I did not know if our chief of police was there with you. Uh, of last evening or uh, not, but um, I, I was going to maybe uh, suggest that um, I didn't know you were going to be on the panel. I, I didn't even know how they got the audience selected. I did not know how the questions came about from the floor. I saw people there uh, last night in the audience. I went, what? I'm telling you the truth. I did. What are they doing there? You know, and they've said this and that, which I was kind of like a little disturbed. So I don't know how they were able to select the panel. I don't know how they selected the um, audience. And I don't know if the speakers were allowed to just get up out of the audience, very small audience, but there was a large crowd of us on online. I'm concerned about the questions because the online comments, which was coming from a few people, and these people were gun holders, and they knew about guns, they were military, and they did not like, you know, what was really being said. Um, not, not, ju not you, but just- well, They probably didn't. Well, no, not, no, not you. It was just the panel in general. Uh, they felt that it was kind of overlooked. So I was going to ask Dr. Jenkins if there's anywhere there were parents trying to get online to get questions answered, and they were not. I tried to get on, um, and then I said, oh, I don't need to. After uh, Kevin Berry was the only one, I think, spoke about the money that we did not receive. That is something that we really want to lobby for in Tallahassee and, and the federal. Tallahassee needs to be given their fair share and the federal government needs to be given their fair share of funds to come down when Orlando is this large, we've had so many things to happen, but yet we do not get those funds. But Dr. Jenkins, I was wondering if there's anywhere, I know that you, any way that we could get those questions that were not answered because they were about children. And then I said, well, the authority is the superintendent of schools, the chairman, and then the school board members that we represent different areas. I do not feel that the, the um, communities were well represented. There was a young man there from the Paramore Kid Zone, um, but that's, that's not really all encompassing and in representing our district. So Dr. Jenkins, I was gonna ask to see if there is a way we may be able to hold a forum or a virtual forum or something that we could be able to answer those parents' questions or they have concerns. Most of our parents have already gotten answers from several of us. So we don't get overwhelmed about the guns and stuff. But I didn't know if you felt comfortable out there by yourself 
trying you might want to reply to that yeah let me, let me reply and let me um explain what i what i can tell you obviously okay. this was um hosted by channel six um they reached out to me um, probably uh about a month ago i um I reached out to our staff, and um, I got a briefing. Uh, the superintendent was aware of the program. I got a briefing from a pretty comprehensive team. I think, I think, under the circumstances, y'all did a pretty good job of um, of getting me ready for that program. Uh, Chief uh, Holmes was in that briefing, and um, what I knew going into it initially was that Chief Mina had been invited and. Um, as well as um, Danny Banks, who is the uh, FDLE special agent in charge. And so my, ki my kind of analysis is, you know, who's on the panel mm -hmm. and, um, and does it seem like an appropriate place for us to be represented, given the fact that they were running this this particular week. Um, I think we all agreed. Uh, Dr. Jenkins agreed. It um, it made sense to be there. So, it was. I did feel prepared. I feel like the staff has been. I, I can't, Dr. Jenkins. I cannot say enough. And I haven't done this publicly, but I should. I cannot say enough about the um, the support that I've received from your administration, from your entire team. They have been just top notch. Every question that I ask. Ask. Um, they are so forthright and so helpful. And a lot of questions that I don't even know to ask. Um, just been every single person that I have dealt with has been outstanding. So I want to thank all of you all for making this transition so easy. Um, but anyway, they were extremely helpful in getting prepared for that. Now, I will tell you that when I got there, um, I realized that the, uh, the audience I don't know how they selected the audience. And I can imagine that some people watching the program probably um, felt that it was, yes, um, I was, yes, I got there and I saw member Gallo in the audience. Um, I saw a lot of friendly faces. I felt very comfortable being there, but I didn't have the benefit of seeing what you were seeing, which was the online feedback. I can imagine that some people probably felt that, um, that there was a little bit more, there should have perhaps been a more balanced representation of, of people that were a little bit further to the right on um, on gun rights issues. I am a strong believer that every every citizen um, of sane mind and that can fly in an airplane and um, is a legal standing citizen and not a threat to our society should be able to own a gun. Um, but I also understand how very volatile this issue is and I gave some serious consideration as to whether or not that I thought for my own purposes, is it was a good place to be. So I have no regrets, but I would the rest of the questions I would have to, we'd have to ask those to um, to Channel Six. And I really find it interesting what you're saying in terms of what you were what you were seeing. Um, but I, I I felt like there was a large amount of agreement on the panel, and I would tend to kind of expect an issue like that to be a lot more volatile. So I did go in nervous on that issue, of course, but I still felt, felt like I, I know where I am on this, and um, I think I'm in line with most people, and um, I felt comfortable being there, and I felt comfortable, quite frankly, bragging on um, the job that Orange County Public Schools has, has done in trying to be ahead of the curve in terms of making our schools safe. Dr. Jenkins, you want to respond to the other issues that um, Member Gordon has raised about whether there's a, a need or an opportunity for some sort of a forum, uh, a digital forum? Certainly, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Member Gordon raises an, an important issue. What I was thinking is perhaps we might do the webinar on school safety like we did for our planning process, because what happens is we get questions from time to time. We can refer folks online to look and see how we plan and cite our schools without having to just go back and answer the same questions repeatedly. There's a webinar that talks them through. Now, when it comes to school safety, we have some limitations on what we will disclose because that is an extra layer of security, not to, uh, to hold some items confidential. But there are some things we can put on a webinar so folks can um, uh, frequently ask questions, uh, so folks can key in and get some of those answers. It would be limited, but I think it'd be helpful um, for any member of the community to be able to click on that like we did with our planning. When we, when we hosted our planning, we had very small turn, uh, turnout for the meeting, but lots have gone online to look at it, and board members have been able to refer individuals when they would like to know how we plan inside our schools. And so I think we can produce something similar around school safety that, uh, again, emphasizes we are limited statutorily about how much we will disclose, but happy to give them some parameters to let them know we've got um, 
several strategies in place to try to keep our schools safe. We can do that. Yeah, excellent idea. And, uh, Member Gordon, you want to follow up on that? Yeah. Okay. I, I really thank you for that because we have, because of you and, and, the, and the previous board and the continuing board, a police department for our schools following suits with other school districts in the nation. And I felt that, I know, you know, Channel 6 meant well because every time someone would ask a question, they would go online and, you know, be in the library, and I am, they would say, oh, go click to this article. So-and-so spoke about that. That's not what they wanted. They wanted exactly what you're talking about. And I want to highly praise your parent academy on last evening, last week. Oh my God, they were, if they can answer parent questions <coughs> in all languages, Dr. Jenkins, are you paying them extra to be there at night? Well, we'll talk about that. This board will talk about that. Because let me tell you, I saw your staff dedicated. And they were there, and I, I, just, I just kept waiting and waiting. Everybody that wanted an answer in their language got it. They did not have that last night. It was hard. They say, well, Spanish. You had to either do Spanish or English. That was limited. Then the people left what, what um, Chair Jacobs didn't answer. At least you left the school board in good shape about how we felt about certain things. But the answers, they were our children. They were our students addressing the panel. I, I don't want to see our students addressing a panel that does not know OCPS procedures. Because when they got up, I said, why are those children not looking into that? You know, we got it in the cold. We're, we're drilling them every day. But the ones that got up, there were three students from various high schools that got up, and they were OCPS students. And I said, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Then that left the audience, and that's when the people online said, well, nobody. They sound like they know exactly what they were talking about. And then uh, you would come back in chair and try to bring them back into reality, but it was so lost. But they kept referring them to articles. So I, I admonish you, if we can do that, have our own, uh, even an open forum um, to help them answer these questions and even get a copy of the questions of some of them, but a lot of them were definitely with the guns. Um, and those gun expert people was letting everybody know that online that nobody on the panel really knew what they were talking about, about guns. Okay, they made that perfectly clear. And um, I, I just think that if we did it, the Parent Academy did an excellent job. They put the webinar on. After they did the webinar, everybody sat there in, in, with their different languages, and then they began to respond back and forth, and they stayed there that night until every parent question got answered. So I just thought that that was fantastic. So I think if, our, uh, if you can help us to get our, our police department to do that, and we do it and answer those questions that it would clear up so that there would be no concern that we don't know what we are doing as it relates to what people want to know about gun control in our schools and the safety of students in our schools. Thank you so very much, Superintendent and Madam Chair. Thank you. I, am I the only person who's not aware of the, the what was it, a parent? The Parent Academy Virtual School. Okay. I'm, did, what did I miss? So, you know a lot. It sounds real. I know, but it sounds like something I would have loved. And I, I we have them all the time. Yes, so. Okay, yes. uh, there will be another one. Yeah, so, yes. I'm yeah. sorry, Madam Chair. Please, okay. definitely help me out. So, parent parent academies. We do two different ways. One is in person, all over the district. About once a month, we have something at one of our high schools. The last one um, was at Olympia High oh, School. Sorry. Uh, in person, where parents can come from all over the district. And then a couple of times during the year, we, we do virtual parent academies so that uh, parents and families can tune in online. And that took place uh, last week. I believe it was Wednesday. Yes. Uh, but it's advertised as a virtual parent academy. So we have the in-person version, and then we have the virtual parent academy where folks can tune in for a topic that is discussed and presented, and then some Q&A and, and assistance with anyone who might uh, be tuning in via their computer. 
Very, very cool. Well, okay, super. Sounds. And we don't yeah. pay them extra, I don't wow. think. Maybe come down, Dr. Jenkins. We'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. <laughs> Name's fair. <laughs> Member Lopez. <laughs> Member Lopez. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to go back with um, <laughs> positive pathways. Um, I agree with um, Dr. Ca uh, Caster Dental. I went there uh, with Dr. Bernier and the experience, it was amazing. Um, I want to emphasize the safety because on every hallway, they have a system. So they have a supervisor on every um, hallway. They have um, restrooms after every two classrooms. When you get into the classroom, you can see the, the, um, the diversified um, education, different st strategies. I even saw um, ESC aids in the classrooms and they look sharp. Um, you know, even transfer from one classroom to another one, they do it with an adult, with a supervisor as well. So, you know, the experience, it was um, great. So before I, I judge anything based on, on, because parents are asking why my son or my daughter is going to this school because, you know, I'm afraid for cer certain reasons. Or, um, so maybe they could think, so we have different students having or facing different um, situations instead of being expelled from school, they are in the pathway, so they think, no, it's gonna be worse for them. So it's not, uh, it's not like that. It's very safe, and the environment is very uh, good. I have a good impression, so. Very good, just very good. Thank you for that report. <laughs> Member Gould. Okay, I'm gonna shift completely away from this business and um, congratulate our chair on her honor at the Big Orange Awards, which now feels like a month ago, even though it was only like five days ago. <laughs> um, but last Friday evening, the, the West Orange Chamber of Commerce uh, honored many great community <laughs> leaders, and one of them was our chair, and she received the Burt Roper Award for her service. Two weeks ago. Okay, so I, I'm not crazy. It wasn't just last Friday. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, time does fly, but we haven't had a meeting between them. So um, it was really a, a lovely evening, and it's, it's so neat to see that recognition uh, come to you. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Huh? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay, I have uh, I have a couple of announcements I want to make, um, and then um, and then a request of our vice mayor, vice chair. Now I've got the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, vice mayor now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> First, uh, Linda Covert will be serving as the board's representative on the Citizens Commission for Children. That is the commission that, um, uh, when I left as mayor, I added an additional $30 million of funding on an annual recurring sure basis. Sure yes, did. so um, we, are, we are counting on you to um, help guide making good decisions for the best use of those dollars for our youth. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm very honored to serve in this capacity, and um, as we are a team, if you have questions, suggestions, or input that I can take to the commission, I'd welcome that from any of you and any members of our OCPS team. Wonderful. And I want to recognize um, Mrs. Castor Dennell. She has agreed to serve as our representative on the YMCA Education Committee and the Packing District. So we appreciate that. I think you're going to find that fascinating. I had a briefing from um, John Rivers and the team, and um, they're doing great things. If you don't already know what they're doing for Orange County Public Schools, which you probably do, they're doing great things. So it's an incredible partnership. So thank you for um, stepping up to the plate for that. And Pam Gould will be serving on the United arts board so with that i want to thank each of our board members who has um, taken on extra responsibilities outside of just serving on this board and now um 
in keeping with our our custom and tradition, long-standing tradition here at Orange County Public School Board, I'm going to ask if uh, Miss Gordon would lead us in uh, singing a uh, happy birthday to Dr. Williams. Uh, people keep having birthdays. It is your birthday, right? She's not here. Is it really her birthday? She had to leave. It was her birthday. Yeah, they, oh, thank God. She went. She had to catch a flight. Council of Great City Schools HR conference. Well, because uh, I saw her earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so you got out of it. No, don't do it while she's not here. So we can we can do it at the next meeting. Yes, or, yes, or we'll see if if the county attorney or the school board yes. attorney believes that we can convene a special meeting outside of the sunshine to sing Happy Birthday. I think the answer to that is no. So we'll do it at the next meeting. You know, you know what. Um, Ma Madam Chair, let, let me let me set the record straight. Yes, <laughs> on our long-standing tradition. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, I, I, I never. I only. <laughs> right, I only mouth the words. <laughs> I've never sung them out. <laughs> my children, and you just saw my son here tonight. <laughs> they have asked me not to ever play the piano again, and never to sing. So I don't, I followed, I follow all of the musicians around. I go to all of their concerts. They let me be adjudicator and everything, believe it or not. I don't know music. So I'm telling you all of that. Just, I cannot sing. All right. Okay. Now so. listen, trust me, I cannot sing. It will embarrass them. Mm -hmm. They have asked me to tell you this personally, yep. to not ask me again. They are the ones with the musical background. And so, I'm serious. Okay, so just just to set the record straight, just Thank to set you. the record straight to close out this discussion, and I have the floor and I'm not yielding yes, it to you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what is worse. Okay. I am a teenager. I am in chorus and I am in a band. Yes. And my mother, mom is the one who says you can do anything. Everything you do is right. Everything is beautiful, right? My mother tells me I can't sing. I cannot sing. Okay. Now I get I get elected mayor. I'm asked to go. Uh, uh, who is it? Second Harvest Food Bank. Who is yes. it that does those lunches where we would all um, uh, we would serve the oh, food? Yes. Where was that? Uh, hotel Smith? and Lodge. Okay. Okay. Central, Central Florida. Okay. So we're supposed to just walk around delivering yes, food. No problem. I got it. They asked me if I'll open, give opening remarks. No, I don't want to give opening remarks. Would I do this? Would I do that? I'm like, no, I just want to come. I don't want to speak. Finally, they say, how about you just lead the Pledge of Allegiance? I can do that. I get up to lead the Pledge of Allegiance, and they start the national anthem. <laughs> I am the only person on the stage. There's a microphone, and they start playing the national anthem. Oh so I got you beat. You got me beat. So if it's not going to be you, then we will have to decide who else it's going to be. Melissa but I thought it was a really a no, genius Melissa, idea. Melissa, you. Melissa? Haven't you hit, where did you I know, Melissa, I'm a top. Listen, All right. <laughs> we, we cannot, we're not going to take a... 50 years plus. <laughs> Member Gordon, you're out of order. We are not going to take. We are not going to take a vote on this matter. It is not agendaed. <laughs> Dr. Jenkins, we're going to agenda this for the next meeting, for a vote on whether or not it will be on consent. Whether or not you can do tryouts if you want. Whether or not Member Bird is going to take over as the official Yay. birthday singer leader. Uh, without any further business to come to the board, oh, we did not pass the record by any stretch of the imaginations for efficient meetings this evening, yeah. but we had fun. Yes, we did. Meeting adjourned. All right. Good job. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. I cannot.